Hello all you crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games. Welcome back to things that you may not have known or in Game Maker. Let's talk about the cleanup event. So, you probably know the, the destroy event, it's been part of Game Maker since the very beginning. If you go to add event, go to destroy. Uh, this is the destroy event, it runs whenever an instance is destroyed. Uh, we know this. And to, uh, in order to trigger that, we can do something like destroy the player, for example. Something like this, right? I can run, I can run the game again and destroy the player. All right, we know how that works. However, uh, there are a few instances in which the destroy event will not run, and uh, there is one instance in particular where the destroy event will not run, which may or may not be relevant. I'm going to, to change the uh, the destroy message to show debug message so that it appears in the console. Um, I'm also going to add a mirror to this message in the create event. And this is going to say uh, player has been created. And if, I, uh, if at the beginning of this video you notice the weird, mysterious, swirling purple teleporter that it is a, uh, that's just hanging out on the right side of the screen, uh, this is going to, this is going to teleport the player to another map, and this one will teleport the player back. And you'll notice that our create event is running every, each and every time, because our, uh, our player is not set to persistent, and every room has a separate instance of the player object. And if, we're to, if we were to do this, uh, we, are, we would just keep running the create event, we would never run the destroy event. And a lot of times that's okay, but if you have something like a DS list or a, a buffer or some other data structure that needs to be... Uh, perhaps destroyed when the player is destroyed or when the player just otherwise stop stops existing. There's a uh, One of the one of the walkie sprites is like not correct I have like a, an invisible walkie sprite somewhere around here, and it's causing the player to flicker out of existence um, back to the point uh, This could be a problem if you had something like and I'm going to do something that's maybe a little bit unrealistic But it'll be uh, enough to show um, How this could be a problem? We'll say buffer equals buffer create, and we'll make a buffer that's uh, 10 megabytes in size. Uh, that's going to be 10 kilobytes, megabytes, uh, buffer fixed in an alignment of 1. So we can, um, in the player's create event, we can allocate a buffer that's 10 megabytes in size in the destroy event. Uh, we can say buffer delete on that buffer. And if I were to uh, run the game now, and if I were to pop up the Windows Task Manager, pop up the Windows Task Manager, and go and look at the uh, the Game Maker runner process, we're going to notice that after a while, uh, if I go through this teleporter enough times, that our memory usage is going to climb, and uh, what we've got on our hands is a uh, is a bit of a runaway memory leak. And again, this is a bit of a dramatic example. This is maybe uh, perhaps not exactly something you would do in a game. Uh, but we are seeing that the longer I walk through this teleporter and do regular gameplay things going between rooms, uh, the player's create event continues to run, the destroy event is never run, and anything that we have that needs to be destroyed is, is no longer being destroyed. And that's a little bit of a problem, um, needless to say. I can... I'm sure I don't have to um, list off any things that could happen as a result of this that would be a little bit undesirable. And that's where the cleanup event comes in. So, and just to, just to reiterate, this will run, uh, the player's uh, destroy method, the player's destroy event will run if I actually hit the enter key and destroy the player like this. Of course, that also locks up the game and gets us in a, uh, in a stuck state because we can't interact with anything. Um, if instead of the destroy event, we were to change event and go to the cleanup event instead, uh, the cleanup event is very similar to the destroy event and that it will run when the destroy event is run, but it will also run, um, as you can see, when I when I hit the enter key to destroy the player, it will also run uh, when when the player leaves the room, when a non-persistent object leaves the room. And we can see that if I have the destroy event set to set to do this, we're having both messages popping up in the console down here. So the player has been destroyed and then recreated. If I were to do it again, the player has been destroyed and recreated. And if I were to look at Windows Task Manager, or if I were to look at the uh, the memory, the memory graph in the, in the debugger, uh, we would see that 
we no longer have uh, a runaway memory leak and buffers being allocated 10 megabytes at a time, and uh, we are we are no longer doing anything super dangerous that would slow down and break the game. If I recall, and let me just run this again just to make sure, this will also, the cleanup event will also run when the game ends. So if I were to X out of the game, uh, the cleanup event would be run. We see player has been destroyed. Uh, whereas the regular uh, change event to destroy event will not, and that can come in handy in, in cer under certain circumstances if you want to do something like um, write some data to a file. Yeah, the destroy event didn't run when the game ended. Um, if you want to do something like write the player autosave to a file when the game ends, you might consider using the cleanup event for that. For what it's worth, um, there are other events in Game Maker that you could use to do these things. You could use the, I believe it's an other room end event, and that would detect when the room ends, that would fire when the room ends, and that is something that you could use to, um, to also clean up uh, particular object properties. Things that need to be deleted when you go to another room or something. There's also, of course, the, if I were to change event again, go to other game end, and this is what would run when, um, when the game ends, and in Game Maker, before the cleanup event was added, uh, this is where you probably would have put things like auto-saving the player's state or saving saving ga other game settings. And then there is, of course, the regular destroy event, which we all know and probably love. Uh, all the cleanup event really does is converge these three events together so that any cleanup that has to be done here can just be executed in the cleanup event, and you um, you don't have to duplicate code in three different events, or you don't have to uh, move the uh, move the code out to another function call or something, and call that function call from uh, three other events. There is, and you can decide for yourself whether you think this makes sense or not. But there is a reason for the destroy event and the cleanup event to be separated. Uh, cleanup is more for memory management for things like deleting data structures or buffers or anything else that needs to be deleted, lest it pile up and create a memory leak. And destroy is generally best thought of as uh, more gameplay related things. So you might put in the destroy event instead things like if you create a particle effect or an explosion effect or um, some other thing that happens related to gameplay when an instance is destroyed. Uh, maybe if you have a, a score, you might put the player score going up when an enemy is destroyed, whereas that wouldn't make sense to have in the cleanup event when the room ends. But that's pretty much it. That's the cleanup event. I've wanted to make a video on this for quite a while, but have just never really um, made the time to sit down and, and record a short video on it. I also try to post at least two game dev videos a week. Uh, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one let's make a game, currently Bullet Hell. So if you're interested in any of the weirder things that you can do in Game Maker, such as 3D stuff, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards any of these videos being made, look for the links to that in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Then Nothing Happened, Square Crow, Sindra Larson, Posho, Gunnar Clovis, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Army Armbruster for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.